welcome back to my channel. Today we will discuss on VIP questions, chapter 6, circular motion. Questions number 1. For an object to move in a circular motion, it must have move width. So we know that in a uniform circular motions, the value of V, the magnitude of V is always constant, no matter at which point. Okay, it's just that the directions of V is always changing. Okay, so the answer is A, constant speed. Okay, question number two. The speed of an object in a uniform circular motion is given V equals to 6 meter per second and the diameter of the circle is 2.5 meter, meaning that the radius here is 1.25 meter. So what is the angular velocity? So as we know that the angular velocity is equal to V over R, so we can substitute V equals to 6. R is 1.25 so therefore the answer for the angular velocity is equals to 4.8 radian per second so the answer is B okay question number 3 of mass move in the horizontal circle with a constant speed of V1 when the same mass move in the same circular path meaning that M same and the radius are the same with the speed of V2. The new centripetal force is only half that of the first one. So what is the ratio V2 over V1? So we know that the centripetal force F is equal to NV square over R. Okay, so since M and R is constant, meaning that our F is actually directly proportional to V square. Okay, so V2 over V1 is equal to F2 over F1. Okay, and V2 over V1 square is equal to F2 over F1. So F2 is equal to half of the value F1. Okay. So F1 and F1 we can cancel. And uh, so V2 over V1 square is equal to 0 0.5. So therefore V2 over V1 is equal to square root 0 0.5. And the answer that we will get is equal to 0 0.7. And next, we go to question number 4. An object moving at a constant speed on the horizontal circular path, radius is 6 meter. If the frequency is given 0.2 hertz, find the centripetal accelerations acting on the object in the unit of meter per second square. Okay, so we know that A is equal to V square over R or R omega square or equal to V omega. Okay, so since we have the value for the radius r and also frequency, okay, so we can use a equals to r omega square to find the centripetal accelerations. Okay, so r is equal to 6 and omega is equal to 2 pi f where f is 0 0.2 square. Okay, so the finally the centripetal force that we will get is equal to 9.48 meter per second. Okay, so the answer is B. Question number 5. If an object of the mass 3.5 kg is traveling in circular path with a radius of 3.14 meter, so they give you R 3.14 and the speed is V 3.46. So what will be the centripetal force on the object? Okay, so as we know that F equals to N V square over R or m r omega square or we can write as m v omega so depends on what other informations we have so since we have r and also v so we use centripetal force is equal to m v square over r so we substitute m equals to 3.5 kg v is 3.46 square and r is 3.14 Therefore, we will get 13.34 Newton. Answer is C. Okay, next question, we go to question number 6. A ball of the mass M moves with the constant speed V in the horizontal circular path with the radius of R. The ball is attached to the string of the length 24 cm and makes the conical pendulum. And the angle give here is actually 30 degree. Okay, so calculate its velocity. 
Okay, so this is actually a conical pendulum where we need to resolve before we find we can find the velocity. Okay, so first step, what should we do is we must draw the free body diagram. Okay, so here we have the tension because there is a string and there is a weight acting downward. Okay, so this pendulum is rotating in horizontal circular motion where our FC is towards the center. Okay, so meaning that here the pre body diagram that we can sketch here. Okay, this is our FC, this is MG, and there is a tension at the angle of. Okay, so since this is 30 degree, meaning that this one will be 60 degree. Okay, so based on this free body diagram, we actually can form two equations. The first one is Fx, the second one is Fy. Okay, so we will write Fx equals to for this case fx is equals to tension cos 60 degree and we know that f net here for x component is actually equals to centripetal force where we can write as nv square over r equals to tension cos 60 degree okay so this is the first equation we can form from x component okay the next equation is fy equals to ma where for y component there is no motion up or down okay, our f net for y component is equal to zero so therefore the force acting upward meaning that is t sine 60 is equal to the force acting downward equals to mg okay we take equation 2 of equation 1 where equation 2 is t sine 60 equals to mg over equation 1 t cos 60 over nv square over r so since tension they are referring to the same tension and also same m therefore sine 60 over cos 60 we will get tension 60 equals to rg over v square okay so finally we will get the value for the velocity where we know that velocity square is equal to rg over tangent theta okay so we substitute into the equations where v is equal to square root okay r here is not given but we can find because we know that the length here is 24 cm and the angle at here is 30 degrees so r here is equal to 24 sine 30 degree okay so we will get 0 0.12 meter so after that we substitute into the equation r is 0 0.12 meter g is 9.81 over tangent 60 degree okay so finally the velocity that we will get is equal to 0 0.82 meter per second okay so the answer is a okay last questions we will go to questions number seven okay so this question is actually almost similar like questions number six where we need to resolve it before we can find the speed of the particle so question number seven a particle move in the horizontal circle of the radius okay here is the radius where the radius is equal to 0 0.15 meter or 15 cm inside an inverted smooth hollow hemisphere calculate the speed of the particle okay so this ball it will move in a circular motion with the radius of 15 cm so we must draw the free body diagram first where we know that it will experience the weight mg and at the same time it will also experience a, a normal force huh? because it is contact with the hemisphere so the normal force here is acting in this direction perpendicular to the contact surface okay so the free body diagram that we can draw here is actually mg acting downward and the normal force is acting in these directions so we need to find what is the angle first huh? the angle here and so this is the triangle where we know that from the center until here is actually the radius so we know that the radius is equal to 30 cm or 0 0.3 meter and the radius here is 0 0.15 so we can find the angle we can use 
cos uh, cos theta equals to 0.15 over 0.3 so therefore the theta that we will get here is actually equals to cos 0.5 or equals to 60 degree okay so we know that here is equals to 60 degree so since this ball is moving in the circular motions and our f net actually is acting towards the center so this is our f net or the centripetal force okay so from the three body diagram actually we can form two equations the first equation is fx okay so the fx is equal to normal force cos 60 degree where our fx here is actually also equal to nv square over r so this is our first equations okay the second equations that we can form is from y component and the y component is equal to ma where is equal to zero meaning that the force acting upward and sine 60 degree is equal to the force acting downward equals to mg okay so we can do it ratio where equation 2 over equations 1 normal force sine 60 equals to mg over normal force cos 60 over mv square over r okay so normal force normal force we can cancel m and m we can cancel okay so tangent 60 is equals to rg over v square Okay, so our V square will equal to RG over tangent 60 where R here is 0 0.15, G is 9.81 and over tangent 60 degree. Okay, so finally V we will get 0 0.92 meter per second. Okay, so answer here is C. Okay, so that's all for today. Thank you. See you on next video. We will continue discussing for VIP questions chapter 7. See you. Bye.